Hey y'all, welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach and Jen's here. You'll see her here in just a second. But I thought it'd be good to show you what a working farm looks like uh, in a full day because we have a lot of people here, a lot of people that helps out um, now. It's been really nice having a little bit more family ran farm uh, is what Jen and I've always wanted. So let's check out and see what everybody's doing. So first off, Grammy Karen and my mom just made a bunch of more a goat milk soap and that is now chilling in the fridge for 24 hours. And then after 24 hours, it enters its sitting place. So then we'll cut them up and they'll sit here for a month to deactivate that lie. But this is one of their jobs that they've been doing weekly. The kiddos, they're recovering. We all just got back from our camping trip and everybody's a little sickly. Um, you get a little sniffle, a little campfire stuff going at you. Yeah, let us know. So they're recovering today, no homeschool today. And they're just taking life easy. There's the fat cat. <laughs> then out here, the grandparents are shucking corn. Getting it ready. That's right. <laughs> and so then that means Jen and I are down at the store. And so we have been getting it cleaned up. Um, it needed a good cleaning, getting some empty boxes from all the orders that we get um, and stuff like that. Um, just making it tidied up and we're kind of working down here today. So Jen's been in here cleaning up and we're all nice and set up. She's got some new items that she just got recently approved hot off the press to be able to sell, which are pickled peppers and carrots. So that's really cool. We now have fresh produce since the garden's starting to produce <laughs> for us. So we got all that in here and we have a bunch more that we need to bring down here. And then she also decided to put a whiteboard up. So it's some of the like hot things that people are looking for. It's got a quick price tag just so they don't have to look at that, uh, look at the specific item. But that was kind of cool. Get a little bit easier for people to see. And I just went on an egg hunt. It's freaking free range chickens. Every time you find a nesting area, they, you get them all. You leave a, a fake egg to say, yeah, at least I know where it is. Might not be where I want to get them, but at least I know where they are. They're too smart. They know it's a fake egg and they go move it. I just found a bunch in our sweet potato bed over there. <sighs> Gotta love the thought of a free range chicken, but my goodness, they can drive you crazy sometimes. Okay, the grandmas have gotten all the corn shucked. There's a couple not so good ones in there um, but other than that everything seemed to be fine out of the corn but all this corn shucks and soaks that goes to our animals it's good stuff Hey cows, hey cows, Daisy, Fossey, Daisy, Fossey. Is that good, Mama? Uh oh, you dropped it. There you go. And now while the cows are enjoying their nice little snack, I'm gonna take the opportunity to open up one of their pastures without them all over my feet. Bossy, Daisy. Bossy, Daisy. What's up, old Henry? Look how big old Henry's getting. That big old hoss already. Hank, he about the size of you. And they'll go back and eat their corn, um, corn silks. However, if I open this without them knowing, sometimes they don't 
find out for a really long time, which isn't a big deal. But I like to just let them know it's open. Never forget to turn your uh, power back on. It's something that you learn the hard way once you have a cow out. So I always remember to turn that back on. And with the pastures, if you have the ability to, attach all your pastures so where you can just close them off with a little wire gate, you know, just something that you screw onto. Makes your life so much easier than having to walk them, you know, out in the open, away from a fence, over to another pasture. If you can connect those pastures, just keep rotating them that way. Go down and come back, go down and come back. Makes your life so much easier. It's literally just opening and closing doors. What are you doing over here, babe? I'm checking the eggs that were found on the egg hunt. So I call this floating them, but I, you don't want them to float. If they float, that means they're bad. If they lay in there just on their side like an egg would, they're good. But if they start to tilt up, that means that they're older and they'll be going bad soon. So thankfully all the ones that we found are good. That's great. Yep. Okay, things are turning a little bit south around here. Not for me. Not for her, not yet. I'm starting to feel whatever in the world kids have, but I'm trying to fight it and get on through this. Um, so the uh, mom's got the corn blanched and put in the freezer. We didn't show that uh, and the green beans. Yeah, we had a, a, a handful of green beans, uh, not totally enough to can. So sometimes what we do when we're not getting a whole lot, we'll freeze these things um, and continue to grow and then we'll come back and can once we have an abundance amount. So that's probably what we'll do with the green beans. Um, however, the corn, if you're unfamiliar, it's very easy. You just peel them, not peel them, Shuck them. Shuck them, thank you. Uh, blanch them, but blanching means you put them in boiling water for what, a few minutes, just a few minutes, it just blanches them. Put them in freezer bags, stick them in the freezer, and they're good for a year. And if you're anything like us, we love corn on the cob, so they go pretty quick. Um, we also do canned corn just with all the stuff we have going on right now. That one just needed to go into the freezer for the moment. Uh, but that loads us into what we're doing next. So what are we doing next? Oh, we're currently putting the dirty dishes in the dishwasher. There's that. And then we're going to core and score all of our tomatoes and go ahead and freeze them until we have a big enough batch to can. Yeah, because we got back from camping, went and did a big harvest, and it was a good size harvest, our biggest one yet. Just not enough to start breaking up the canners. Yeah. So here are all of our tomatoes that we got, which is quite a few. I'm so happy. This one I've been looking at for months. And I was like, I hope it doesn't get ripe and then get destroyed on me while we're gone. Thankfully it didn't. And now I want to weigh it and see how much we got here. She's a big one. And we also have this one. It's called Faciated, Faciated? Yeah, faciated Blossom. Face, faciated, Faciated Blossom, which is a wild one, but it got really big. So let's check it first. It is six. Well, let me change the unit. So thank you, measure and cooker, that you need 16 ounces as a pound, but I want to check it in the poundage. So that is 1.049 pounds. They just look so much bigger. You have no idea how big it has to be to grow a two pounder. But let's check this solid guy out here. It's lower. Huh. How about that? But that's still a honking tomato and I'm very proud of it. I'm pretty sure this one is a Haasinator from Haas Tools. So yeah, buddy. So we're scoring and coring, which means you just cut the top out because that's where a lot of your bacteria and bad spots can hold. And then you score the bottom, which is just make an X on it. And you do that because if not, they could collapse or get bad spots on them that make them really susceptible to just be nasty when you get them out of the freezer. And this way, when you do get them out, the skins are gonna just fall right off. And that's what you like. All right, so that got three pretty good sized bags. I'm gonna wait here in a second just so we'll know how much it is. I'll write it on there. It just helps whenever you're gonna start canning to know how many pounds you have. And then Jen over here, what are you doing? I am putting more zucchini in the freeze dryer. Nice, and so we are doing that because it was a great success. Um, we actually clipped it. Um, if I can find it, I'll throw it in here um, just in case if it hadn't got deleted or not. But uh, we showed you our freezer on them. We always like to show you the after. Like we like to rehydrate them, tell you about texture, tell you how to taste, stuff like that. It was really good. Yeah. It tastes like summer squash. So I think this is going to be a great new addition that we didn't have before the freeze dryer. Uh, being able to use all of the zucchini up. Yes. And you know, her and I was talking too. You know, a lot of people shred it and then freeze it for zucchini bread. You can still do it this way too because you just rehydrate it and you wouldn't lose the moisture. So it's pretty cool. They are now done. And here they are. 
So it's really exciting. And as always, you know, we have to try everything we freeze dry. So we're going to try one dry, and then we're going to try to rehydrate one and see what like we like. Chip. Yeah. Really good. That is really good. It's like a squash chip. It's actually better than most vegetables that we freeze dried. Yeah. Um, what we have noticed is the fruit is great as a dried snack. Mm -hmm. um, the veggies haven't been the most fantastic. You'd want to rehydrate them, but those are pretty good. Yeah, it's still sweet. Yeah. Now we'll try to rehydrate one. And so all I did was just put it in a bowl of water and we'll just give it a second and let it rehydrate. The one cool thing about when it's rehydrating, uh, at least of what we learned, it'll only consume the amount of water that it needs. So it doesn't matter, like you don't have to have this precise amount. Um, just let it rehydrate and then it'll leave the excess water out. Hey, that didn't take long at all to rehydrate. I didn't assume it would because it's very, very absorbent. Um, unlike say meat or something that would take a little bit longer. So like Jen had just mentioned to me, she's like, normally you don't eat raw squash. <laughs> you would cook it, but we're still going to try it anyways. So the texture is, it still kind of holds. I mean, it's definitely flimsy, but I will say it has more form than when you would thought from freezer. Good crunch, dude. It's like summer squash. Yeah, it really does. Right so, out of the garden. That is going to be a huge win for the freeze dryer right there. I'd say there's no difference. No, not at Absolutely all. Absolutely not. I mean, some stuff is different, you can tell, but not squash or zucchini. Nice. Yeah. That worked out well. So we got three quarts, three full quarts of that. Yeah, so come wintertime, if we wanted to rehydrate it and then just saute it up like you usually do squash and zucchini, I'd say it would be great. And you know, you could have it in the winter. One thing I would like to try is frying it. Thawing yeah. it and then frying it and see yeah. how, if it holds its texture. Man, talk about a little taste of summer when you have the winter blues. That'll do it. All right, so Got bag it. number one is 3.3 pounds. I have a little bit more to write on there. Yeah. And 2.7 pounds. And the last bag is 2.6 pounds. So that, let me add that up real quick. Okay, so that ended up being about 8.5 pounds of tomatoes. How about? Pretty good. And so that was, you know, we're still at the beginning of our harvest. So it'll end up being where each time we go out there, we're getting 10, 12 pounds of tomatoes, which would be good. And we probably won't be freezing at the time. We'll just go straight to canning. But as we're getting these smaller ones, it's a great way. I did, however, not put the big guy in there. She's just too perfect. We're gonna have that one as a slicer. So I had to leave a couple out for that. Uh, but other than that, these are gonna go in the deep freeze. She's got the zucchini in the freeze dryer. Yes. Are we doing anything with these cucumbers? Yeah. Not, like, today. not today. We just picked them yesterday, so they've got quite yeah. a while before they go bad. Oh, and somebody's coming because they want to buy them. So we probably need to leave some out. A lot of people are into the pickling cucumbers and I totally get it. So uh, maybe yeah, we'll wait to see that. Yeah. A couple things I also wanted to show you all that we do. Um, so. I don't know, I have no idea what the purpose of this thing is on her shelf. It might be for paper towels or something, I don't know. But it's a spot where we dry some herbs so she can have fresh dried herbs sitting right here in her kitchen. But if you weren't aware, you can go clip fresh herbs out of your garden, put them in some water, and they'll last fresh for a while. This is just a nice way to not have to go to your garden every time you need some basil. You can just grab some right here. Um, we put that in probably over a week ago, and you can tell it's still full of good life and good basil leaves. And now, y'all know how I kept talking about the season when you want to get everything nice and small, and we always let them go too big. Well, here we are getting forearm size squash because, you know, they just get away from you, and they go big and get way too big, but it's okay. You can still use those. So we've still got this to deal with, which we'll probably eat a lot of it. Got just a couple tomatoes left. Down here is all the cucumbers that we was talking about, and there's some peppers in there as well. Uh, and the green beans and corn are done. So it's been a really good preserving day. Uh, it's been a lot of thanks to the grandparents' help. It allows us to do some of the more business side of the stuff, business side of things, which I'm about to show you. Uh, and then also, hopefully, here in a couple days, we can talk about some other really exciting news um, about some more family business that's happening. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's been Jen and I's going to always have this, just to have the family working on the farm. Um, I know I mentioned that earlier, but. It just, it feels like the right thing. So now that we've gotten most of the preserving done that we're gonna do today, um, I can quickly feel myself going downhill. Fun fact, I have been sick since my birthday last year. On my birthday was the last time I was sick. And when you're seeing this video, my birthday's in two days. So it's looking like it's an annual thing that may be happening. 
Um, but I'm gonna fight it and keep walking through it. It's just like I'm feeling a uh, little sit down time here in a minute. But I wanna show you what Jizz done. So I have been working on getting more of my recipes approved because I'm a certified home-based processor and a certified home-based microprocessor. They're two different things and both separately allow you to sell certain items. Um, anybody can get them. If you have your cottage food laws, it just takes a lot of hoops to jump through yeah. and um, some money you do have to pay every year to get recertified. But um, with that being said, you, do, you also pay $5 per recipe. But I've been working on getting more of mine approved so that we can sell more down from the farm, specifically like early summer stuff like um, zucchini pickles, I, I got potatoes because we do canned potatoes, pickled okra, watermelon rind pickles, and our carrots that we got. So that's very exciting. I got all those approved and got them printed out today. And then I'm gonna put them in my book with the rest of my recipes and certificates. And if anybody ever asks, it's all right here and I can show them everything. So yeah, so I know a lot of people have questions about that. Like, how are we able to sell it? What do we need in this, that? It does vary state by state. The cottage food laws are that title is pretty common in most states, but the specifics of the cottage food laws are different per state. Um, we've noticed that with some of our friends like Melissa and Tyler, they're in Maryland, we talk a lot. Um, we noticed that theirs is a few few different than ours. Um, but this is the, the business part, the not fun part of running a farm or homestead and trying to sell anything. Because the moment you wanna sell it, then you gotta get approved for everything. So you can't just get your microprocessing certificate you also have to get every single recipe approved to be able to sell that canned good so like she said it's a lot of hoops yeah. but you can do it the reason they make it so difficult is so you won't do it so you just got to keep going and it'll be over before you know it and then you'll have a binder the size of this yeah. like we do my trick has been finding one contact one lady to deal with yeah and that lady is the one who answers all my questions she answers quickly she approves things quickly i don't try to talk to everyone else i have her email and that's who i go to yeah and if anybody has any questions i say this lady her name is the one that approves me for everything so ask her yeah it's it's pretty sweet having that contact and you will too you'll get there as well with that <laughs> he was worried for me what do you do <laughs> that's just supposed to be worried um look look i'm working mm -hmm. how was soap making today it was fast. Yeah, that was shucking corn. That was fast too. Snapping green beans. We're such fast workers. That's right. You like fast workers. Appreciate your help. You're welcome. So Grammy is not officially a hired hand here on the farm. Well, um, she, well, yeah, she. I mean, she is a hired hand, not full time. She is paid by the job. That's right. <laughs> well, daily. Like when she comes, we get her for the full day and we pay her. So that's kind of how she works out uh, within this like mama where she. This is her only job. Uh, Karen and I, we still do our, our full-time jobs, but when she gets an, a, a chance or ability to, she comes and helps out on the farm and we pay her for it. So, it's kind of fun. Okay. We had a lot more we was going to show you, but I think we are going to have to wrap this day up sooner so I can uh, just kind of rest and take it easy. Um, however, like mom, she is out actually getting feed, um, so I don't make her lift the bags, but it's nice to have her as the runner because she'll go like drop off our orders from Etsy that we have. Um, which by the way if you haven't checked that out there's still stuff down in there it's always linked down below um, but she's also going to stop by the feed store pick up feed for us so i'll unload it when she gets here um, but it's just nice having so many moving parts it helps as our farm has grown um, we have always told you all it's outgrown two people um, to be able to maintain it well so maintain and excel in certain areas um, so it's been huge for us it's i mean we know how blessed we are um, but we know how hard we've all worked to get to this point. It isn't like we were able to just hire everybody and say, let's go do this. Um, there's a lot that you have to go through uh, to get here. So if you're in, still in that building up stage, which we are too, we're always building, right? We're just different hurdles that you're getting at. Um, don't stop. It'll get there. Even if it seems like a family member is completely against it right now, I promise things change as time changes. So as Tracy Lawrence says, time marches on, right? So. And it's time for me now to start taking some of our remedies that we take to get to feeling better. Um, I have taken all of Jen's tinctures, the elderberry, I've taken the turmeric, and I've taken a shot of fire cider. Um, a lot of that though is preventative, I felt, uh, I have felt as if it's preventative. Now, when you are actively sick, the elderberry specifically does help you just take more of it. Um, but I'm going another natural remedy on top of that, which is clear white lightning moonshine. And so it's just a little bitty shot 
I don't know if it's everywhere else, but hot toddies and just straight clear shine um, are two top remedies that we have for kind of the chest congestion, cough stuff in your head. So nobody ever likes it. Um, I'm not to say that we don't like that one with moonshine, Karen but yeah, Karen does. But nobody, nobody should just like straight white lightning <laughs> as a normal drink because it's basically rubbing alcohol. But here we go, because it's going to burn. If y'all thought fire cider was bad and you never had this, you ain't living. Whew. Whew. I put some hair on your chest right there. Now, one thing about any time you're taking something that's disgusting, always blow out as soon as you take it. Helps you get it down better. Whew. All right, y'all. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We love y'all. Till next one.